Even for being so long lived, death weighs heavily on high elves. Perhaps it's because all of them have seen more than their fair share of death and suffering over the course of their lives. Perhaps it's because the horrors that await them in the afterlife are beyond the comprehension of even the most deranged human. Perhaps they simply love the pomp and circumstance of a properly executed funeral. No matter the reason, High Elves have created a variety of rituals and traditions surrounding death, regarding both the fate of the body and the fate of the soul with extreme concern. What happens to a High Elf's body after death depends on which kingdom the elf hails from. In Lothurn, the bodies of great heroes are placed on elaborate funeral ships and released into the inner sea. The vessels will float across the waves until they meet their final destination, be it some distant land or the bottom of the ocean. Kothik will also consign its dead to the waters, though they approach it from a different perspective. Rather than sending their deceased princes and mages out on ceremonial barges, all of the seafaring kingdom's dead are casually dumped into the churning waters of the great ocean. In addition to being a cheap, easy way to properly dispose of the dead, it also keeps the megalodons and leviathans of the surrounding waters well fed. This ensures that the monsters never stray far from Kothik's shorelines, and they will act as an unwitting layer of naval defense for the kingdom. Other High Elf realms shun burial at sea in favor of other practices. In Fiery Kalidor, fallen elves are cremated to quickly free the spirit from the body. The elves of Illyrian and Tyrannoch are buried in marble and serpentinite tombs capable of holding entire generations of families. Individuals from these kingdoms are deeply connected to their homeland and life, and see no reason to shatter these bonds in death. Avalorn also buries its dead, though the bodies are placed within vast subterranean mazes of jade and amber. Handmaidens of the Everqueen are reposed on ivory thrones within these labyrinths, their funeral garb rich beyond the dreams of even the greediest dwarf. No matter where they initially hail from, the bodies of Phoenix Kings and Everqueens are cared for in accordance to their station. Upon their deaths, they are borne to the Isle of the Dead on sacred white barges. These ships move under their own power, with no one steering the vessel and no wind filling their sails. The remains of a dead Phoenix King are guarded by the Phoenix Guard, shepherding him to his final resting spot among the other ancient rulers of Ulthuan. The primary sources are silent on what force, if any, guards the body of an Everqueen when they pass on, though it seems likely that their most trusted handmaidens accompany them to their final resting place. Unlike the fate of the body, the fate of a high elf soul after death is much more uniform. Their spirits glow bright in the immaterium, and demonic predators are drawn to them like moths to a flame. Selenesh in particular hungers for elven souls, as she finds them delicious. Elves caught by the demons of the Prince of Pleasure are doomed to oblivion, their essence consumed by the gluttonous god. Even if a high elf can somehow avoid Selenesh's hunger, there are still other threats to contend with. Arith Kial, the elven goddess of the underworld, captures any soul Slanesh somehow overlooks. She sends out the Rephalim, wraith-like creatures that serve the Pale Queen, to scoop up these loose spirits. Any soul unfortunate enough to fall into her clutches are dragged to Mirai, the Black Pit, and tortured for all eternity. Despite this, some High Elves will secretly worship the Pale Queen in the hopes that she will grab their souls before she who thirsts can better the eternal torment of Mirai than the oblivion of Slaanesh's gullet, they believe. Other High Elves view this belief as suspect at best and outright heretical at worst, and Arith Kial's cultists practice their faith in secret. Despite the horrors awaiting them in the afterlife, High Elves are not without their defenses against torment and oblivion. By binding their spirit to a waystone placed in their ancestral lands, a High Elf can ensure that their soul is drawn into this stone upon their death. By doing so, their spirits can remain safe from demonic predation. Even in death, however, the elves are not allowed to rest. Their essence fuels the ritual powering the Great Vortex, and the sounds of spiritual battle beyond mortal sight can be heard in the depths of night as the elven spirits fight an eternal war against the ghostly minions of chaos that dance along the winds of magic. If a waystone is destroyed, not only are numerous elven souls left defenseless against Slash and Arith Kial, but the wardings supporting the Great Vortex come that much closer to collapsing, dooming the rest of the Warhammer world to oblivion. On that dour note, we come to the end of our overview of what happens to High Elves after death. Their Dark and Wood Elf cousins have a similarly unenviable afterlife, though those will be covered at a later date. 
Plus, it would be unfair to say that they deserve such a fate more than the High Elves, so those videos would be less of a bummer. Anyways, if you want to hear about that, then you should consider subscribing to the channel to be alerted of these videos when they come out. Hitting that little bell notification helps with that too. If it doesn't hold that much interest for you, you could still like and comment down below to boost the algorithm, just so you can help the video spread to other people. A little bit helps out, and I really appreciate it. That's all I have for today though, so until next time, this has been Sigmar's Chosen, signing off for now.